I want to talk now about what it means. What it means to live as a Christian. Allah. I'm going to give you seven ways Allah. that you can live as a Christian in your life. Allah. These are the seven disciplines that mark out a Christian life. They are the heart of Christian spirituality. And the first of these, don't feed the troll. Don't feed the troll. So, the first of these is prayer. It is the idea that as a Christian, our life needs to be hemmed in through prayer. We pray at the beginning of our day, we pray at the middle of our day, we pray at the end of our day, we pray all the way through our day. The Christian life is supposed to be a life that is marked by prayer. Bread fire, don't feed the trolls. <laughs> we are meant to have discipline, don't feed the trolls. We are meant to live as a people of prayer. And the defining prayer for a Christian is that which was given by our Lord Jesus Christ when he taught us the Our Father. When in the Our Father you capture the very heart of Christian theology, the very heart of the Christian worldview. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, if you know it, chant it with me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 This is the very heart of Christian theology. In that prayer alone you find the very basis of the Christian worldview. So say it often throughout your day as a Christian. Say it as much as you can. Say it all the way through your day. And when you're not saying it, be Allah. thinking about it. Allah. Christians, unlike Muslims, don't have a part of the day where it's forbidden them to pray. Ooh. Can you imagine a God that says, don't worship me between nine and 12 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of God is that? As a Christian, we are called to give our entire lives as a living sacrifice to the Almighty. That is what we're called to do. That is the true worship of God. The second Christian principle is fasting. The discipline of your body, the discipline of your passions, the discipline of your desires. Christians are called to fast regularly not feast for 30 days of the year like Muslims do in Ramadan where they eat more in Ramadan than they do at any other time of the year. Many Christians fast for half the year long. Yes, we all know JC needs to fast more. Yes, we all know that there are many Christians that need to fast more. And this is why Christians should fast. We should fast because we are beseeching God in some special petition of prayer. We should fast because fasting is a way of changing our inner humanity so that it reflects God through discipline. We should fast as a worship to God in connection to our prayers, to discipline our souls. And Christians fast traditionally in Lent, which is the 40 days before Easter, and in Advent, which is the 40 days before Christmas or the for, for the first sun, the four Sundays before Christmas, depending on the tradition. Christians in the Didache used to fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. And I encourage you all to fast. And there are different kinds of fasts. There are fasts that are essentially vegan. You basically become vegan. There are fasts that are just for set times of the day from sunrise to sunset 
or from such an hour to such an hour. But there is also the Jesus fast. And that's where you go without food completely for 40 days. Wow. This is the great fast. I know. I know. I know Christians who have done the Jesus fast. Trust me, you should only do it once in your life. You should only do it once in your life because it will take its toll. Mm. My personal friend who did the Jesus fast lost three stone. Wow. He lost three stone and his toes started to turn white wow. because of malnutrition. The Jesus fast is something you should only do once in your life. And before you do it, you need to seek medical advice first. Yeah. Not yet, not yet. It takes a braver man than me to do the Jesus fast. But the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, our Lord, the truest champion of them all, conquered the flesh. He conquered the flesh through the fast. And that is what you should do. The third Christian discipline, shush, the third Christian discipline is to give alms regularly, to give charity regularly. You must give of your wealth to the poor. You must give of your plenty to the needy. You must remember the poor every day. You must remember the weak every day. And that charity starts with the church. That charity starts with those who are poor in the church, those who are weak in the church, the orphans and the widows and the refugees and the dispossessed, those who are homeless, those who are in need within your fellowships and within the Christian community. The fourth Christian discipline that you should mark out a Christian life is personal self-examination. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about another one that needs to come first. We'll get to it. You have to study the faith. This is a discipline of what it means to be a Christian. You need to study the Christian faith every single week. You need to study the history of the church. You need to study what Christians believe and why we believe it. You have to study what our values are as Christians. You have to study what are the sources from which these beliefs and these values emerge and the journey that those beliefs and those values have undergone through the history of the church. And why must you study? Because to be a disciple of Christ requires effort. It requires thought. It requires commitment. It requires discernment. And you can't do that without studying the sources. And then it leads on to our fifth discipline, the discipline of self-examination. Examine your own soul. Examine your own thinking. Examine your own attitudes. Examine your own sentiments and ask yourself the question, are they in conformity to Christ? Are they in conformity to the way of being a Christian that is rooted in Christian doctrine and Christian values? Are you upholding Christian identity the same identity that the church has upheld for 2,000 years against all opposition. Examine yourselves. The sixth discipline is to practice evangelism. That means to share the Christian faith with others, to share the Christian message with others in word and deed, in your conduct as an individual and your conduct as a fellowship, as a collective. 
and to preach the gospel, to speak Christian truths, to witness through martyrdom to the Christian faith. Martyrdom means to bear witness. And there are two types of witness. The white witness of someone who does not give his life, but who lives a life of self-sacrifice that testifies to his commitment to Jesus Christ as his Lord. And red martyrdom, which is to lay down your life for Jesus and the church against her enemies, against those who oppose the truth. You must evangelize. The Christian path is not a path of ease. The Christian path is a path of sacrifice. It's a path of commitment. The seventh discipline is to live in community. What does it mean to live in community? It means to live your life with others. It means to live life on life with other Christians, to share one another's burdens, to share one another's struggles, to share one another's battles, to stand in solidarity with your brothers and sisters in Christ. That should be done locally in your local fellowship. The Christian community has to stand for its Christian identity, which is rooted on its Christian values and doctrines that it passes forward from generation to generation. Which means that as Christians, we stand in a historical flow, a historical tradition, first exemplified by the first martyrs and the church fathers. And that is what we must stand upon as a community. And we must live in that community. We must stand with our brothers and sisters and we must stand up for our brothers and sisters against those who stand against them. Those are the seven disciplines that mark out a Christian life. There are others. There are other disciplines. I've not gone on to mention them all because a discipline is that which is needed to anchor your life to become a disciple. Indeed, the word discipline is where we get the word disciple from. Or rather, the word disciple is where we get the word discipline from. So, are there any questions on this topic before I move on to my next one? Questions? Okay. If you're interested in listening to the next topic, you need to take a step forward because I can't project my voice continuously.